Hi there. My name is Nestor Köhler and I work as a software developer as part of our XR team at Futurist. Welcome to this comparison video where I compare the Meta 2 to Microsoft's HoloLens. The reason for this video is that for the last two years the HoloLens has been the only real holographic mixed or augmented reality headset, whichever term you prefer, that has been available for developers. But now with the release of the Meta 2, it finally has a competitor. So the question is, of course, how does it stand up to the HoloLens? This video is one part of a two-part review where I try to provide a thorough comparison of both devices. The second part is a blog post where I provide more detail about the actual user experience and also the experience of developing for each device. But in this video I want to provide more of a visual demonstration of the capabilities of each device. To demonstrate these capabilities I created an application with four small demos inside it. These demos are the same on both devices except for small adjustments based on the interaction patterns for each device. And each demo is designed to highlight some, in my opinion, central aspect within mixed reality. The first demo is designed to demonstrate the field of view of the device. The second demo is just a test of the pure processing power available. The third demo demonstrates something which I think is very central for mixed reality, which is the spatial mapping capabilities of the device. And the fourth demo is then a test of how to do some basic object manipulation. So let's get to it. So here you can see this little demo selection shelf I built for the HoloLens. Since the HoloLens's main viewing area is roughly at eye level, I, built, I went with this kind of design which places the demo icons in roughly the same area as my head naturally points. As you can see, there is one icon for each demo. By hovering your gaze over the icon, you can get a small description of the demo and its purpose. On top of the shelf, there are two buttons. The one on the left is used to close any current demos, and the one on the right you can tap to reposition the shelf using your gaze. Alright, let's move on to the Meta 2. Now here we have the Meta 2 demo selector shelf, or perhaps more accurately, platter. Now, let me explain why I didn't go with the same kind of design as with the HoloLens. The way the Meta 2 sits on my head means that the main viewing area isn't on eye level the same way as with the HoloLens, rather it is a bit below. So therefore I wanted a design where I'm looking down on the demo selector and picking things up from it. You can also see the same four demo icons here as in the HoloLens demo. And to display information about the demo, all you need to do is hover your hand on top of the icon. Most of you have already probably guessed the purpose of the handle in the middle of the platter. By grabbing it, you are able to move the whole thing around. The design of the handle was chosen such as to suggest that grabbing it with your hand is the right way to interact with it. To make all the demos easily accessible, I also wanted it to be possible to turn the whole platter. So therefore, by grabbing either the ring or one of the spokes around the platter, you are able to turn the whole thing like a wheel. Finally, we have the icon for closing the current demo. You can either grab it to move it into a place that is more convenient for you, or you can hover your hand on top of it to close the current demo. So, let's move on to the actual demos. Since so much talk is always about the displays of different XR headsets, let's begin with the field of view demo. As I will throughout this whole video, I will begin by first showing the HoloLens version of the demo, and after that I'll show the Meta 2 demo and how it compares. Now the demo itself is a virtual gallery of, with different sizes of paintings, different di distances from you. I'll also include some footage filmed straight through the headsets to try to give you a 
view of what it actually looks like, since these videos filmed with the inbuilt cameras don't provide a ac completely accurate picture of what it actually looks like through the headset. The principle for how you start the demo is the same for both headsets. You simply grab the icon and then drop it down in the world somewhere. And this opens up the demo, in this case this little gallery for you to admire paintings in. As you can see, the field of view of the HoloLens isn't exactly mind-blowing, but the holograms themselves are quite crisp. Uh, you can also see here how the darker areas of the, of the paintings aren't actually black rather than transparent. This is of course since both the HoloLens and the Meta 2 and any kind of uh, device like them uses an additive system for displaying stuff so you can't draw black, black only just becomes transparent instead. Let's now look at the same demo using the Meta 2. To open the demo, I simply pick up the icon and drop it down. One note I want to make here is that, unlike with the HoloLens, I have a very hard time determining depth here. You can't of course see it properly in the video, since to get the proper stereoscopic effect you need to actually wear the device. But as soon as an object moves one to one and a half meters away from me, judging distance becomes very, very difficult. As you can see here from this video, the field of view of the Meta 2 is clearly much larger than the HoloLenses. But the same remains true for dark colors here, the same as with the HoloLens also. Okay, so let's move on to the next demo. This next one is made to test the processing power of the device. The basic idea is that we have this container that will be slowly, or not so slowly, filled up with small, simple objects. These objects have, an, have a script attached to them that causes them, each time they collide with something, a small force is applied pushing them away from the collision. And the more objects, the more collisions, the more processing power is needed. So, let's take a look. Now again, we begin by dragging and dropping the demo icon to open up the demo. On the right you can see the current frames per second and also how many objects there are in the VAT. Now I put a limit of so that if it drops under 20 FPS it stops spawning new objects, just to make sure that the application doesn't freeze up. And now here you can see that it has reached its limit. Not very impressive. So keep those two numbers in mind as we move on to the Meta 2 version. All right, let's open up the demo here first. As you can see, I have bumped up the spawn rate quite a bit just to make sure it fills up fast enough. And this might already give you a hint of how much more processing power there is here. But it shouldn't be too surprising considering that the Meta 2 requires a minimum of a Intel Core i7-6700 processor and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050. And yeah, we see here once we reach the limit that the difference is an order of magnitude. And really, there's not much to say here. A high-end computer has a lot more power than the HoloLens. And now for the part that I consider criminally underrated. Spatial mapping. This is the ability of the device to model the world around it, and which helps it create the illusion of the real world and the virtual world actually interacting with each other. 
The demo is made up of a small cannon tower that you drop down on some surface and then it shoots cannonballs all around it. Now again, starting with the HoloLens, you aren't really aware that the HoloLens is constantly doing spatial mapping in the background, which is really nice. It's only once you do something like this that you notice it. And from my perspective here, it really does look like the tower is standing on the table. This is one of those effects that you can only really appreciate in person seeing it through the device. And then another important part of spatial mapping is that it keeps the holograms very stable. Even when moving around and quite close to the holograms, it still stays very stable. Now let's move on to the Meta 2. Unlike the HoloLens, the Meta 2 isn't able to do the scanning or especially the building the model in the background. Instead, you have to explicitly start a scanning mode. And as you can see here, the range of the scan isn't that long. Compare this to the HoloLens, which can scan areas up to 3 meters away from it. Now that we have scanned the table, let's drop down the tower. Here is a consistent problem I've had with the Meta 2, in that it seems to draw everything too close to me. Even here, though it's a bit exaggerated, it should look like it, like the tower is where my fist is, but instead it is somewhere beyond my wrist, closer to my elbow. And now when I drop it down, this is again one of those, you gotta see it to believe it, but to me, I didn't have in any way the illusion, the same kind of illusion that the tower was actually standing on the table here. And especially once you start moving around a little and you notice that it is much more unstable compared to the HoloLens. Also here I go down on my knee to take a look, try to figure out how close to the table edge I think the tower is. And from this point of view, I would say it is not too far from the edge. But once I get up and look from the top down, I can see that it is much further away from the edge than I thought that it was. On to the final demo. Now, just looking at things is all good and well, but we also want to be able to interact with them. This final demo gives an example of how to manipulate objects, more specifically how to move them, rotate them and scale them. And on this po point, both of the devices have very different ways of doing things. So opening up the demo in the HoloLens. The problem with the HoloLens is that we want to use the same gesture for all three manipulations. That is, we want to hold down our finger and move our hand to manipulate the object. So here I have decided to go with a design where you have buttons above the object and you choose what kind of manipulation you want to do by clicking the right button. Now moving the object and scaling the object these feel pretty good and natural using this kind of model. But rotation still feels quite intuitive. And even having tested a couple of different designs, I have yet to find any one design that would feel really intuitive. Now, on to the Meta 2 version of things. Design-wise, the way you manipulate objects with the Meta 2 is very clean. You use one hand to move an object and then you can use two hands to rotate and scale an object. Now, one thing that is a bit difficult is that you it's very hard to keep rotation and scaling separated. So if you only want to do one, it becomes quite difficult. It can also be, since there's no physical resistance, it can also be hard to 
visualize how you should move your hand to get the rotation you want. But the biggest problem is that the hand tracking can be a bit spotty and the hands can occlude each other quite easily. So, what have we learned from this comparison? Well, let's begin by looking at the areas where one device clearly outshines the other. Now, first off, when it comes to pure processing and rendering power, the Meta 2 is just far beyond the whole lens. Now, how much will of course depend on the exact computer you have the Meta 2 tethered to, but even fulfilling the minimum requirement will just blow the HoloLens out of the water. Now, of course, this comes at the price of having to be tethered to the machine, limiting how much you can move around. Now, looking at spatial mapping and hologram stability, two things that I find absolutely central to a good mixed reality experience. The HoloLens just wipes the floor with the Meta 2. With the Meta 2, I constantly feel like everything is floating a lot around a little bit and objects are constantly playing catch up with my head's position. And during prolonged use especially, this does start to mess with your head a bit. It also breaks the illusion of having a truly mixed reality. Furthermore, not being able to constantly scan and update a model of your environment really limits the possibilities of interesting applications. So, what about the field of view? Well, the Meta 2 does have a better field of view than the HoloLens, but there is a couple of points I want to point out. First of all, the area where you use the Meta 2 is much, much closer than with the HoloLens. With the Meta 2, you are supposed to have things literally within arm's reach so that you can actually touch them with your hands. While with the HoloLens, you, the same area is roughly one and a half to two meters away from you. What this means is that even though you have a larger field of view, the part of the field of view that is taken up by a single object might be much closer than you'd think. Now, with the, Met the Meta 2 also has another problem, and that is that you have to wear it so low on your forehead that it becomes sort of like a large baseball cap, and it cuts off a large part of your vertical field of view. Therefore, if you want to look at stuff that is above eye level, you have to move your head around a lot. Now, regarding interactions, it's hard to say that one device is strictly better than the other. If I'd have to pick one, I'd probably go with the HoloLens's gesture system, since it is a bit more flexible, but optimally I would like to have a device where both kinds of interactions are possible. So, what is my overall verdict? Well. Personally, I find the HoloLens to be a much, much more interesting device. I suggest reading the blog post that goes with this video, since in that one I discuss even more aspects and I also have a more thorough summary that also takes into account things that have been discussed in this video. But in short, I think the HoloLens does better the most important parts for enabling interesting use cases, and that would be spatial mapping and tracking and being completely tetherless. It also is more able to provide a truly mixed reality experience. And even more, I also find it more tolerable for extended use, but on this point it might vary from person to person. Thank you very much for watching this video comparison of the HoloLens and the Meta 2. I hope you found the information, if not useful, at least interesting. If you are interested in more, I again recommend reading the blog post that goes with this video. Thank you and goodbye.